So the project I'm presenting here is called Open Surgery, and Open Surgery investigates uh, whether DI creating DIY surgical tools could plaus uh, plausibly lead to more accessible versions of healthcare. Um, and I came up with this project by discovering uh, a big number of YouTube videos that show mainly uninsured Americans performing self-surgery or, or medical hacks on themselves. Um, and they do this simply because they can no longer afford their health insurance uh, and they have no access to professional healthcare anymore. Um, whereas on the other hand, uh, uh, surgery has become much more advanced over the last few years. So uh, many advances have been made, especially in the field of robotics in, in surgery. So there's this uh, robot that's called the Da Vinci Surgical Robot that performs, uh, that's, that allows surgeons to perform uh, surg surgery very precisely. So this led me to, uh, uh, to question whether it would be possible to make a DIY surgical robot um, and to see if that would lead to actual, uh, uh, actual results. Um, so in the last year I've been working on uh, the first prototype of this to see as an experiment if this would work. Um, and right now I can say that for about $5,000 you're able to create a, a moving prototype and a moving system. However, it's not stable enough to perform actual surgery with it just yet. Um, so right now it's much more intended as a, as a thought provocation or as a prototype that, that sort of raises these questions and raises debate. Um, however, uh, I do think that if you would get the right people involved, uh, like say hackerspaces or people that right now are, are making 3D printers or, or CNC machines, this would technically be very well possible. However, the biggest challenge would still be that you would need a, a human operator or a human surgeon to, to control the device. Um, so I see this much more as a, a, as a system that would succeed in, in small communities that maybe uh, otherwise would not have access to the high-tech tools that are uh, uh, sold to the hospitals right now in professional health systems. So during the process I found out that it's actually quite easy to uh, buy surgical tools online. Um, so uh, I started the project by ordering medical equipment from uh, Alibaba, which is a, a website that sells um, uh, equipment directly from their Ch Chinese manufacturers. Um, and I, you can simply have it delivered to your home. Uh, and based on, the, based on these parts I was able to, to hack them uh, so that I could use them in the machine. And for this I used accessible prototyping technologies like 3D printing and laser cutting. And this has to do with the idea that it means that the machine would be able to be replicated by almost anyone who has access to these technologies that are already quite widespread. Um, so all of the decisions that I made during the process with regards to the materials or the equipment were based on accessibility and cost. So for example, the, the, the intention to control the machine, uh, the device that I would need to use to do that, uh, could simply be a PlayStation 4 controller, for example, because it's just widely accessible and very easy for people to buy these days. Um, so the same goes for the electronics, because all of the electronics that I've used in the machine are the same electronics that are used in 3D printing devices. Um, and this again has to do with cost and accessibility. So uh, not only are they, they easily available and widespread, but also there's a large community of people that are already supporting these, um, these electronics so that if anything goes wrong or if you have questions, there's a large community of people that is able to answer these as well. The big promise of the, the maker community at the moment is that these days you can make almost anything at home on a near professional level by having access to digital fabrication techniques. Um, and they always present this as a societal, uh, societal change. Um, however, I feel that the real impact in these technologies lies not so much in, in the ability of being able to make these things, but by removing themselves from the marketplace, it means that all of a sudden you create this space where um, you're not lo no longer restricted by the rules that are dictated by uh, the capitalist uh, marketplace. Whereas uh, all of a sudden you don't have to deal with the same re registration or legislations um, and you can uh, basically subvert the, the conservative uh, politics that are usually operating in, in the marketplace.
So the art space uh, as a space for presentation is really interesting because um, people are already used to this space to raise uh, public issues and, and, and they allow for public debate to be had. Uh, which is very different from the, the marketplace, whether it be in design or in engineering, where everyone uh, expects that these um, areas deliver solutions rather than questions. Whereas uh, with my project, the intention is much more to raise the questions and raise the debate. And I feel the art space for this is uh, as a hybrid space that sort of sits between um, uh, culture as well as the marketplace is a, is a very good location to have these discussions and have these talks. Um, however, the impact is always hard to, to determine what it, what it is exactly and, and in the end it will definitely be some sort of a ripple effect that hopefully uh, reaches the marketplace at some point as well. So the project started in, uh, in the beginning of 2015, um, so right now it's we're almost yeah, a little over a year uh, the project is going on now. Uh, and I think on a technical time scale um, it would definitely need a few more years for it, for it before it would be actually uh, operational. However, um, there's a whole number of legal and psychological challenges that, that also come with the project. And I think these are actually much more uh, difficult to answer. Um, so it's hard to say on what time scale this, this would become an actual reality. Uh, so right now it's much more to, to raise these discussions and, and ask these questions. So I see the, the future of this project in uh, collaboration. And uh, right now I'm, I'm trying to create a network of people that are experts within the field. So they're either engineers or surgeons. Um, to think about not so much how this machine could be directly implemented, but much more to see what the actual solutions could be uh, um, by using the approach that, that I took with designing this machine. So um, I see this as the second phase of the project. So the first phase was creating the robot. The second phase is to have this public debate and create this network of people that are interested in, in exploring this area. And then the third phase would be to actually look for uh, potential solutions in this field. Uh, not necessarily robotics, but uh, how we could use the approach of open medicine or open, tool, open uh, surgical tools um, within the medical sector or outside of the medical sector.